Well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Happy Valentine's Day. Gosh, it's so good to be back here with you guys. It's been way too long. I'm sure you feel the same way. Hi, we're scrolling through all the videos, seeing all your faces. It's great. I know we're not going to be doing any dancing, but still feel free to keep your cameras on. It's good. Oh, hi, Melissa. Oh, yay. It's so good to see all of you. I love it, love it, love it. But anyway, we have a huge, huge agenda for you guys today. So much good information. So I won't waste any more time. Let's get into all the good stuff. That's right. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. And thanks again to Capital Swing. Um, what I would like to do is um, please in the comment in the chat section, I'd like to know who's here, who's going to be sticking around. Um, for example, are you a fellow community member um, looking to help sustain any way you can as a community member? Um, are you a community le leader or a community builder? Are you a local teacher? Are you a studio owner? Um, let us know a little bit of who you are, it, what category that fits you in, so we can kind of tailor on how to help you out with this. Uh, All right, the I'm group seeing, we got. All right, some stuff rolling. All right, we great, got, guys. We got teachers. We got community leaders. Okay, great. Fantastic. Awesome. Yay. All right, we got some board members here. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So, yes. all right, this works out great. So first of all, I want to lay out a little bit about what our agenda is today. We'd like to get all the way through it and we'll take questions along the way. Um, so we're going to be talking about marketing and um, how to get a new student registered. Okay. Um, then enrollment, how to register, how that those registered students, how to get them in through the door. Um, onboarding, how to turn new dancers to forever dancers. And then extra ways to motivate. Yeah, so we got a big agenda. Um, let's dive right in. Um, first section is the marketing section. Um, we are actually, we'll talk a little bit about this, but we've done a couple of community videos before and have focused heavily on marketing so the marketing side is going to be a little bit smaller than the rest of the sections um but please if you have any questions along the way again please ask us along the way so first thing in terms of marketing now i'll let stacy take this away this is her specialty ah uh, yes so we've you know been i think we have a little bit of a reputation for marketing and pushing the envelope in west coast swing for marketing which is awesome. But guys, honestly, it really comes down to just not being afraid to try things. So some of the things I'm going to talk about today might be new. Maybe you've never done these things and you might think, oh, I really need to hire somebody to do this for me. And you don't just get out there and try it. It really is just trial and error. Even if you hire a company to do this for you, they're going to go through the same trial and error process. So you mm -hmm. got to just get in there and get started with the marketing. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about in marketing is how important it is to offer some type of a free trial. Now, at District Dance Academy, our studio, we do a full seven-day trial, and that's seven consecutive days. Of course, we have classes, multiple classes each day. Having a studio gives us the availability to be able to do that. But even if you're just building a community and maybe you only have, you know, that one class a week, maybe do like two or three classes as a free trial. And the reason that I say this is because it's really common to do like one class free trial or one day free trial. But we've found that that's great and it will get people in the door, but sometimes they don't have the best experience the first time. And not because of anything you did or anything that happened in the community, but everybody's really nervous on their first time and they don't really feel like they know anybody yet or they know the routine. So, you know, giving them multiple opportunities to get, you know, multiple impressions of your teachers, of your other community members, just really gives them the chance to kind of take it all in. So really suggest giving them as much of a free trial as you can afford to in your business. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna call that like the irresistible offer, yes. right? Cause we wanna, we wanna make sure that those people that come in, that we reduce the excuses, right? They're like, oh, uh, I don't wanna invest my money into this right now. Oh, I don't know if it's worth it. But really, if you're building a very enriching program, they're going to want to do it. You just need to get them in through the door, right? If it's if, if it enriches their lives, they're going to want to spend the money or just whatever, whether it's one day a week or whether they're a five day a week or right, they're going to get involved. So we heavily suggest that one week trial. Um, the next section is 
going a little bit more into like ads, how to get them in through the door, where to spread your voice. Um, and just before we even get into them, you need to be able to track those students. And there's lots of programs that can do that, or you need to hot, whether it's you or whether you hire somebody else to do that, tracking where you get the most amount of traffic so that you can pour more into there, do whatever you can to pour more into there is the best way, all right? Instead of putting all of your your eggs in a, and you will, but once you find one of the baskets generates a lot more eggs, then you wanna do your best to really uh, uh, increase whatever you were doing in that side. For example, uh, we do things like meetup, okay? Meetup is an easy, I think as a, as a person paying for it, it's like 20 bucks a month or something like that for you to have your events on there. We put all of our classes and things like that on our meetup. And we get a lot of people. We almost get like, I mean, I'd probably say 20 to 40 people a month just through Meetup, you know, and it's different every month. You know, sometimes a whole group will come, like a singles group will, will come. So you'll get all of a sudden an influx of 20 to 30 students if they come in through the door. Um, Groupon, Groupon and Living Social, those are really easy to get on. Um, and they provide a way for people to try it out. Typically, it's at a very, very discounted way. So you're not going to make your money with the Groupon purchase. You're going to get them in through the door. And that's how you're going to be able to, you know, generate more income as a business. Um, Facebook ads. Facebook ads are amazing. Probably the best, like, you know, dollar for dollar ad that you can do. Um, there is a lot of ways there's Google ads, there's Instagram ads, and you kind of have to pay attention to your audience, who your audience is for you to kind of generate, like, you know, for example, you know, the, the younger people are a little bit more in like TikTok and, or, um, Instagram, right. And everybody's on Facebook, right. So that's a great way to kind of market to everybody. And best part about Facebook is they create really great audiences okay and audiences are really important in facebook ads if you don't know about this look alike audiences amazing what that means is let's say you have a group of people you would submit the emails phone numbers of those people that you have and facebook would then create a look alike audience duplicate that person who meets, meets those criteria so the people are more likely to join, to like the ad that they see, right? And it doesn't take a lot to research these kinds of things. Um, one, one thing that I will mention throughout it, because I want to give you my sources as well. Uh, we've used a program called DSOA. That is a Dance Studio Owners Association. So good, guys. So good. So good. Mind-blowing. Templates, video coachings. It's about being a studio owner, but if you want to be a good community leader, if you want to sustain a community community through growth and through retention, you know, that's really going to help you out. So DSOA.com, check that out. Um, I'll let Stacey continue to take it away with anything. Maybe I missed it out of Facebook ads. Um, I think that pretty much solves it up or, you know, sums it up with the Facebook ads. Um, and I think that kind of closes our marketing subject. So mm -hmm. at this point, if you guys have any questions, group post. Group post. oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. Good thing. This, See, is, a, this, this is a good this one. Is why, this is why we're a team. Mm -hmm. Feel free guys to go ahead and start posting any questions. If you have anything that you want to know specifically about our marketing process before we move on while mm -hmm. you're doing that, um, I have found so much success without putting any money into it. Even like, you know, $20 a month for meetup has been great, but let's say you're like, dude, this is my hobby. I can't put any extra money into ads post into your local Facebook groups. Now I don't mean like, you know, Washington DC, West coast swing dancers. That's great, but that's not where we're going to find new dancers. you find your local groups. Like we have uh, things to do in Tampa, Clearwater happenings, you know, groups like that, where you're reaching thousands of people within your city who are interested in doing things. They just are sometimes looking for something different to do every week. And those are the people that you want to get in front of. Uh, I made the mistake in the beginning of only posting in like dancers of Tampa Bay, which is great, but they're already dancers. They're probably already dancing somewhere. So don't underestimate the power of just posting, sharing out your Facebook event into local groups. That's right. Okay, let's see. Any? Did we gather any questions while I went through all that? Oh. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, not necessarily to that, so. linked. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Okay, yeah. cool. So I think that wraps up our marketing conversation. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to move into our enrollment process. 
which is really more about you know, taking the inquiry, getting all of their information and making sure that we follow up with the process. Because I feel like sometimes as community builders, you know, we, we put our Facebook event out there, we put it out into the groups and then, you know, we're waiting there at seven o'clock when it's time for class. And we're like, man, I really hope some new people show up today. Um, and that that's sometimes can be really heavy on your heart too. So uh, we learned that it's really important to get people registered so that you can follow up with them because we all know it's scary to walk into your first dance class mm -hmm. even if it's not your first and it's just a new place it's really intimidating mm -hmm. so sometimes just giving them that extra little push to get them through the door is really helpful mm -hmm. so i'm gonna let hugo take it away with all of the steps that we go through step by step to make sure that they actually show up that's right and um and like she was saying en enrollment is the way to ensure that they're able to come in through the door. How do you enroll them into your school? How do you get them in through the door? Um, we have kind of an 11 step process and we'll, you know, there's details along the way. We won't get in through too many of the details, um, but we'll let you know all of the steps. Um, first is taking the inquiry and booking the trial or class. Nice and easy. You, you get whether wherever you get that lead from, you take their information, you put it in, for example, we use MindBody Online. We've used MindBody Online before we even had a dance studio. When we only had a class once a week with a, with a group, we used MindBody Online. Um, their studio program, really great. They do everything. We literally have, we couldn't do anything else with them. We're, we're a part of every one of their programs. So they are gold from things like CRM, client management, classes, um, payments, Auto emails. Um, auto emails. That's what we're going to get to. Those are really important. If you want to, we have five businesses. <laughs> if you want to have time in your hands, automation is the key. It's the key to spending, you know, and it's not that much money, honestly. There's a lot of really great auto email CRM programs that will save you a ton of your time. Just remember, there's one of you. If you are that person who is you know, the community leader growing, there's not very many of you. So your time is very important, right? And if you can't afford to pay somebody automation, and you may have to take a lot of time understanding the automation, um, for example, like zaps, but if you use them, they will save you so much time. Um, let's continue going through. So that was take the inquiry and book the class or trial. Before we even move on, um, we do a, a process like, you know, if they don't answer the phone, we do like a, a two days, four days, and then we, we follow back up in 30 days. What that means is if I get the inquiry, okay, I have to call them or email them or book them, right? If they don't, if I answer them right back and they don't get back to me, two days later, I email and text them. If they don't answer then, I send an email again in four days later. Then after that, I let them know, hey, we don't want to be too pushy. We'll follow back up in 30 days. We follow, we, we um, go back to that process again until they take the next step, which should be, um, I guess, step two would be email, trial, class confirmation. So to, take, to get to step two, you have to speak to them and book them. Um, in terms of that, uh, the follow-up is really important. You'd be surprised, guys. Like, and even that first step, um, I have followed up with somebody for almost two to three months. And three months later, they messaged me and they're like, oh, I'm so glad you follow You keep following up with me because I need that. Like, you know, I'm busy and I need to take that time, you know, to, to do this. It's going to be great for me. Thank you for doing that. I'm coming in this week. So and that alone, sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you, but that alone was a huge learning process mm -hmm. for us. Because I remember specifically Hugo being like, man, I don't know if I should call him again. Like, I feel like I'm really being a bugaboo. You know, I don't want to leave a bad taste in their mouth. Mm -hmm. And then that one more phone call and they said all of that. So, you know, sometimes you have to be a little bit more aggressive with your marketing, be a little bit more aggressive with your follow up and it's going to pay off and people really do appreciate it. It makes them feel like you care. Like you really sure. do want them there in that class. For sure. It's not just, you know, about their, their payment through the door. That's for sure. For sure. Um, okay. Uh, step three, after you email them the class confirmation, don't forget that after you book them, I, through mind body, the minute I book them in a class, it automatically sends them a text message and an email to remind them that they've booked that. 
Fancy. Then they also does it automatically because I've set up these automations. It sends them a 24 hour see you soon message, right? So like the day before, and let's say I booked it two weeks ago, right? They're going to forget. Sometimes I've, before I had this, I call people and I'd be like, oh, you know, I noticed you weren't here. I'd like to rebook you. And they were like, oh, I totally forgot about it. You lost the, you know, the ability to, to grow your community right there just because you didn't follow up or you didn't set up the automation. So that goes a long way. Uh, next one, step four is a pre-class consult. Um, that's just something, I have somebody come in 10 minutes before. Like whenever I'm talking to somebody, I just say, hey, show up 10 to 15 minutes early and I'd love to take you through a tour of the studio, let you know, you know, show you the instructor, show you where everything is so you feel nice and comfortable. They love that, right? You get to know a little bit of them. Um, I'd say, yes, you can have somebody, but even me as the owner, I like being that person. I like to have that touch point with them where I'm like speaking to them the first time they come in. Um, there's a lot of validity in being like the community leader, or that person speaking to them when they come in through the door. Um, step five is introduction to the teacher and, and class buddy. Um, we've tried a couple different variations of this. Trust us from all of, from saying this, we've, we've had a lot of mess ups, a lot of trial and error to get to what what's worked okay um and we we even had like a ambassador program where we had advanced dancers you know we would actually let them get in free to sometimes to the to the dances if they would you know we would assign a student to that specific person and they would you know either speak with them that certain day and maybe message them at another time and just you know send them like you know Hey, here's a cool video that inspires me. Hey, I hope to see you this week in class. Um, and that got too like official. It felt like they were, even though they weren't working for us, you know, I didn't like the vibe that it created in that. So what we do right now in terms of a class buddy is there is just a one-time thing. So I'll pick a student that is, has been to that class a lot, even if they've only been to that class like four or five times, but I can tell that they have the right energy. They, they're, they're, um, they're willing to accept new people. Maybe they're energetic, things like that, right? I would introduce them to this person and they would just speak to them, you know, help, help them walk, you know, especially during transitions. After we do multiple classes at the same time, we all culminate in the same room and do like a demo. And the beginner class buddy kind of helps them because they don't know the flow of what's happening, right? So that, that class buddy helps them feel comfortable, maybe, um, you know, gets next to them in rotation, um, but it's just like a one-time commitment and like, hey, I'm helping you out. Um, so even, you know, new people can be your, you know, as an event, uh, event leader, you can pick that person who's even rather new, but they have a good energy. Um, and it's not so official, right? There, It's like an authentic excitement. Um, From there, uh, this is step six, mm -hmm. if you're wondering where we are in, in the 11-step mm -hmm. process. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit more for the class teacher. And mm -hmm. though it's a part of our enrollment process, I actually think that it adds a lot to the retention. And that's making sure that the instructor assigns some type of homework for the student. That sounds really scary, but it can be something really simple. Like, hey, one time this week, I want you to take, you know, 30 seconds while you're brushing your teeth to think about your posture. Or I want you to, you know, do triple steps down the hallway as you walk to bed at night. Something silly like that, that maybe would just pop into their head to make them think about the studio. But it, again, it, it places that seed to where they're constantly thinking about dance. And I think that that is important for every level of dancer. From there, the next step is the after class follow up. Now, this one is a little hard. It takes a little bit of your time. But again, it pays off in gold. If uh, even a few days after their first class, but preferably the, the next day after their first class, you give them a call, you ask them how it was you know, what was, what was your favorite part of the class? How did you feel like you connected with the instructor? Was there anything we could have done to make you feel more welcome? Just simple questions that make it feel again, like you are invested in their experience in their dance journey. That's right. And, and this after class follow-up would still be, if you did that week trial, that would be, you know, they still have so much more of that trial left. Right. But you're, you're, you're reaching out. Cause honestly, it's easy ish to get somebody in through the first, for uh, the first time. It gets harder the second time, right? The third time, even if it's free, you know, even if that week is free. But when you get through that second and third day, especially that second day, then they're more likely to stay and continue and experience that whole trial. Um, now, their, their 11 step process after that, that, uh, that sixth step, 
it, it continues through to the 7th through 11 if they have not actually paid for. The enrollment process is until they make a purchase. At that point, they're, they're a client with you and then you're onboarding them. So just kind of letting you know the difference between enrollment and onboarding, right? Um, so continuing through a little quicker through step seven. Um, after that class follow-up, uh, step eight is like a 24-hour call. Step nine is a four days later email. Um, step 10 is seven days later phone call. Step 11 is just keep in touch. Like, again, it, we don't want to we don't want to bug them. But again, don't forget that just because it's no now doesn't mean it's no forever. So like even in that, I have them through like a certain amount of like auto emails where 30, 60 days later, we just send them like, hey, you know, here's an opportunity. We maybe would like to offer you another free trial. Right. If they don't if they don't come back for six months. Sometimes I, you know, I'm more likely to let them, Hey, come and experience it again. We have a, we have a whole lot of things we've improved. We know that you'll love it coming in. So um, anyways, from that seven to 11 kind of brings them in through the door, but that 11th step is just hold on, not sorry. You're never going to come back, but we're, we'll be here when you're ready. Okay. I'm going to, before I move on to the next onboarding section, which is again, uh, how we're able to turn the new dancers into forever dancers. Before we go into there, does anybody have any questions about the enrollment process and how we do that? We did have one question okay. while you guys are typing away any, mm -hmm. any questions that might be lingering. Um, he asked, does it take a long time for your business to grow in the dance world? Um, and I think that is a pretty large question. Um, they could have a lot of sub questions built into it. Um, but yes, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I'm here to tell you what's difficult and what's going to work and what's not. Um, we've been building a community now for, I mean, ser seriously been building a community for about seven years. Does that sound right? That since since right. we moved here to Tampa. Um, and yeah, it's taken a long time. We, we just hit uh, about 80 dancers consistently at our Tuesday dance uh, right before COVID. Mm. So, you know, we were really feeling like it was paying off. Obviously, we bought the studio, things were working. But, you know, even still, now that we own the studio, it's not just West Coast Swing. We're having to build ballroom and solo dancing and Zook. And, you know, in a way, it's kind of it's kind of never ending growth. Mm. We're, we're always looking to get more students and always looking to gain new classes and new instructors and it never feel it never quite feels like you made it. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I assume with hopefully you can take some of this information that we're giving you now so that you're you when we started, we didn't really have a process. We were just like let's, throwing let's into the it. wind, let's try this, mm -hmm. let's just start a class and hope people, you know, show up, sort of situation. But hopefully, if you take this process and you really apply it you'll get much better results much quicker than we will. So hopefully it doesn't take you seven years. Hopefully it only takes you two or three to get where we got. But listen, when we started, there was two people in our classes. Two, right? So if you're, if wherever you're at, you're like, oh, I got my one or two student. You better, yeah. you better teach that one or two students like if you have a hundred people in your class because it's never going to get past that 10, 20, 30, 50 mark unless you start treating every class. If, it, if it's not well attended today, if you had you know, 50 people in your class last week and then this week you had eight people, teach it like if it's 50. Yes. Teach it as if, it's, as if it's 100 because that's the experience to get people. They're going to tell their friends. They're going to come back. You know, We live in Florida. People maybe are gone this week to travel, right? To go and do some other stuff and then they'll be back. You know, So um, you never know. Treat, teach all your classes just like if there was, it was packed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's funny because as an instructor, it's normal. We all get a little bummed out when nobody comes to the class. Like you have that moment of feeling, but you have to remember that the students actually love it when nobody's, when, you know, there's less people in the class because they get more information, more personalized. They get more of your time. They get to dance with you more. So for them, it's even a better class. Like I used to feel like, oh, they're going to be so disappointed that like they came here to hang out with people. No, they came here to learn from you. So they're going to be stoked if it's like just you and them. So don't let those negative things mess with your brain. Anyway, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. So I think we are good to move on to onboarding. All right, great. We're doing great on time, guys. I think we're going to make it all the way through our giant agenda. <laughs>
Okay, great. So, so the third concept is onboarding. Again, that is how to turn new dancers into forever dancers. Um, the three words that I want you, I want to start off this subject with is sustainability through retainability. Okay, if you want to sustain, you have to be able to retain. Okay, this is important. Okay, because this is why numbers are really important. Who cares if you have such a, a such an amazing like feeding system for them to come in? Let's say you've developed a referral system. You're doing all of these things and getting a ton of people in through the door, right? And let's say your numbers are growing, but let's say, you know, when you look back at the numbers, you have, even if you're growing, 50% of the people who are coming in are not coming back, right? So really it's that, you are consistently losing and your feeding your your feed is just a little bit more but if you really want growth it's in the retainability right how you can retain that client or that student all right now i'm going to get i'm going to walk you through a couple of things that we do um, right off the bat when it comes to onboarding um it's not only when they walk in, but especially afterwards, how to introduce them to the family, how to help them be more part of not only the community, um, but also be more excited about your, your facility, wherever you are doing. So things that you can provide, such as, um, first thing that we do after they make a purchase is I send them an email, welcome, and ways to get free classes. Uh, I talked to them about the referral program. Um, for example, the way that we do it is anybody who you refer, you get a free class for. So if you get 10 friends in through the door, they don't even have to book. If you just get 10 friends in through the door, you get 10 classes. For every person you bring, we'll give you one free class. That's something that we do. Everybody does a couple different things. Like uh, I've seen people do like if they, if they purchase a series every time, every month they're a part of their series. I'll reduce your monthly unlimited pass by this amount. You know, I've seen those kinds of things happen. There's a lot, there's a million ways. This one's the one that works for us. Um, and even throughout this onboarding, what I've realized is the slow flow of information is important, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to go, this is us, bleh, right? They get and overwhelmed. He, here's all this stuff. You want to be really specific with, how you're, how you're, how you're bringing that person in. So they're not overwhelmed. It's not, it's just slowly ease them in. Um, the second thing we do is a free half hour private lesson. Okay. This is, this is gold. Okay. So if you are just a teacher looking to get more students, if you're a studio owner, community leader, whether it's just to improve your community, we offer every single person who comes in a free half hour private lesson. Now we do that on the basis of them making a purchase. Again, this is onboarding. So I don't offer them that before they come in. When I have, when it, once they make that purchase coming in, um, which is typically through a group class or a social or, some, or something like that, then I offer them a free half hour lesson. Typically we always upsell, you know, into like, hey, you know, pay for the other half hour. You'll really get a lot out of the hour. And um, some people just don't know how important private lessons are and how, how much it'll help you. Um, honestly, just, just simply how much it'll help you. Uh, most beginners come in and they say like, I'm not ready for private lessons. I want to get good. I'm like, how are you, how are you expecting to get good? And it can, it's totally possible to do it completely on your own. I've seen such amazing dancers who have never taken a private lesson before, but if you want more personalized help and less frustration, private lessons are amazing. Yeah. Um, so we highly advertise that free half hour private lesson. Um, next thing we do, this one's a good one, a dance bag. <laughs> uh, whatever program you're with, Capital Swing, if you're with District Dance Academy, are you with DC Community? It doesn't matter where you're at, make, a sh make something, whether it's a shirt or whether it's a dance bag. Because I've literally seen people be like ecstatic. It's all about the energy, ecstatic, like, oh, I'm official now. I got the dance bag. And they bring that dance bag, even if they only wear that dance bag for like the first month that they're super excited about it. And then they turn like the rest of us and they're like, I'm carrying my shoes in my hand. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but they're going to be really excited. And that's how you retain them and make them forever dancers. Right. Um, uh, let's see. 
Next one is online tutorials. Uh, this is a great plug for us. Um, so if you love um, West Coast Swing or any other styles, we have an online platform um, that has live classes, full live, you know, hour long classes, two hour plus long intensives, um, all of the instructionals that we've ever done in West Coast Swing, um, dances in there such as hip hop, shuffle, um, things like that. Um, we do a online tutorials for that. You can find that at online.districtdanceacademy.com. Okay, good. I almost forgot there for a that second. Was, yeah. That was my cue. Yeah, that was a cue. Yeah, and yeah. there's also a seven day free trial for that. Yes. So when we when we do that email, we release that bit of information. We're essentially telling them, hey, this is a really good way for you to keep that knowledge in your brain. I can't remember everything from class. So now you can take class with you, you know, watch the videos, listen to it in your car. Here's a free seven day trial. Um, and that's open for everybody. So if you go to that website, you can sign up for that free trial okay. as well. Online dot districtdanceacademy.com. I see that Tammy asked again, so maybe she can write it. Online.districtdanceacademy.com. So now, not just to make that plug for ourselves, but if you're not, if you're not there yet, there's lots of easy ways for you to create your own video tutorials. So if you're a teacher, I recommend doing it. Just do it. Trust me, we put it off too long. And you know, you always think, oh, well, my teaching will be better next year. I'll do it next year, but just do it. Yeah. Every, uh, anyway. every, everybody's a little different. Like we have people who like will not like we'll talk to you about how the social and how we, you know, how we help them stay a little later. But some people are too afraid to even go out there socially. They will bolt out the door. OK, we've literally had it happen. We've literally had it happen. And sometimes, you know, they'll come in the next time and they'll be like, do you have online instructional so I can practice at home? You know, and so truly these things help you, you know, even if it's not you know, if you're not a business, you're not looking to really make money from it and things like that. Like it'll really help your students to yes. have something. They or, feel confident when they come into class. Or refer them to us. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a community and you maybe don't need to do that, it's an easy way for you to be able to do that. Um, but but uh, even if you don't have that, like something that can really help again with onboarding is sharing your favorite videos. You know, that's some of the best success I think that we've all had with some dancer or mm -hmm. some teacher where we've been sat down and we've been showed like, all the famous routines and all the really awesome Jack and Jill's and that gets people really excited and it introduces them to more than just your local community and shows them that, wow, this is a really big world that I could, I could really dive into. Um, or sharing things like your favorite blogs, like Kay Newhouse has a blog and I know there's a million others that I can't think about right now. Miles and Tessa have a blog, you know, just more things for them to get involved in dance in in your community outside of being there once or twice a week that's the goal there that's right um next one is the uh personal call so out of that onboarding that i said um there was that welcome and how to get ways to get free classes there was the free half hour private lesson there was the free dance bag there was the free trial for the online tutorials and the last one is a personal phone call like at this point they've been They've been there for about six weeks. And that's what I want you to uh, understand that if you can keep somebody, if you can keep a student for six weeks, you are way more likely for them to be a forever student, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot of things that can happen throughout those six weeks. So honestly, we put a lot of emphasis on those first six weeks. And then we do, we do things to enrich the people that we have. We have, you know, ways of helping the people who've been with us for a long time, things like that as well. But um, this is a really important way to grow the community. Um, I see a question. Uh, let me read it. You can okay. read it aloud. Yeah. How do you maintain a full community and support other studios so the dancers are not split? Do you hold the dances in different nights? Yes, actually. That's a great question. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. Especially in our area, in like the Tampa area, there was already an amazing community even before we came here, right? There was already amazing instructors that have been here for over 20 years teaching West Coast Swing in the area. And, you know, we still do our West Coast Swing on the days that they don't do their West Coast Swing, right? We have like our Tuesdays and our Thursdays and that, you know, things like that. Like we've moved it around. We always speak with them. We always, we, we know who has those days. Uh, we are a studio. So, you know, obviously there's other classes during those days. And sometimes, 
those can't really, you know, happen, but, you know, we, we very much keep as the promote, as the promoters on the back end, we do them on different nights as the other people around. Uh, that's just a way that we want to keep promoting community. Um, that's it. Yeah. Just making yeah. sure that that's the, that's the correct, that's the way that you were asking. That's the way that you were looking for that to be answered. So, so. Um, okay, great. Awesome. Okay, awesome. All right. So next one is additional uh, retainability. So this is just additional ways of, of uh, making sure your people stick around. Um, just as a, as a whole, you want to have like this trifecta. You want to be able to have privates, groups, and parties. You know, and some people, like I said, like you want to make a, you you want to make it so even the one day a weeker still loves it and feels welcome, right? Um, but if you want to create people who are a little bit more involved in your program, typically, you know, somebody who's a little bit more dived into their hobby, they're probably going to do that about three plus days a week, right? So what we're looking to do is have, you know, help them work through private. So they're understanding that personalized attention, getting the groups, you know, getting to dance with everybody in that, you know, in that um, practicing and drilling format. And then the socials where they're actually going out there and social dancing and trying it out and things like that, not just not drilling. And I, I think those are really important for you to do to like have a social where it's a social, where like it's okay to take some time to speak with everybody. It's called a social. So like you don't have to be dancing all the time. Feel free to like stand around, chat, you know, like that, even just that breaks us off into a section of like, if you are right now just a community member, right? And you are looking for some things to be able to, how, how to help sustain the community even as a community member, that's one of them, you know, how to be, uh, talk to the people, talk to some of the new people, ask, you know, ask a little bit about them, what they do, um, uh, just diff getting to know them, tell them a little bit about yourself, you know, like, again, this is about community. So that's one of the most important things. Uh, we have a list here with just, just that being a community member. Um, the small victories. This is awesome. This is a big one. I'll let Stacia actually take this away because her and I were talking about this a little earlier. I love the way she worded it. Yeah. So, you know, having a small victory is something that makes you want to keep going in any hobby. There was someone on Facebook recently who made a post asking West Coast Swing competitors, why do they love competing? Um, I wish I could remember who that was currently. But anyway, there was a million great answers on there. But almost every single one of them mentioned something about, yeah, it feels good to know that I'm doing better that I'm actually progressing, that I did something right. Um, and having small victories like that, even obviously nobody's competing or most people aren't competing right now. You know, we don't have those. So providing those in other ways, or especially as a beginner, because beginners don't really compete, is so important to enriching how they feel about dance. Even just, you know, especially, you know, if you're reinforcing things like private lessons, if you know someone just took their first private lesson, and you tell them, you know, obviously, genuinely, we don't want to make things up, but genuinely, their, their connection felt so much better today. Like, I, I don't know what you're doing. You must be practicing, but it feels great. Telling somebody that is going to make them want to do more of whatever it is they're doing, whether it's just practicing on their own or taking private lessons. Like, those small victories mean everything and, to them. And in that instance, make sure to focus on the positive of that. Yeah. Yeah, your connection was great. Make sure to be like, man, it was, it was, you know, it's so much better than it was last time, yeah. you know, in terms of like, you know, you don't want to make it seem like, you know, they were back, a backhanded compliment, yeah, backhanded compliment you know, but yeah, your connection was great. Thank you. You know, that, that was a great one or um, something like when the leader, you le actually leads the pattern in class, right? Socially, right? Followers like, great, you know, that was awesome. A smile, uh, you know, some, telling them that at the end, they will feel like a million bucks that you actually noticed that they, that they led that pattern. And they're going to keep wanting to come back to class. Exactly. So little things like that. Um, and those are just, you know, little compliments, little things here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, same thing. Like if you're teaching a class, use your students in the demo. Like mm -hmm. it's so easy. Hugo and I teach together all the time. So it's easy for us to just grab each other and do it with us. But giving your student obviously makes them a little nervous, pushes them a little bit, but it makes them feel really good if they can demo the move or the technique that you're teaching in the class. And then everybody gives them a round of applause. 
they feel really awesome about themselves because they did it. Yeah. Um, and it's a cool way to train them for being under pressure as well. Yeah. And that's, and that's something that you can do in the level one class, Yeah. you know, the very, your crash course class, they come in, they learn how to do a sugar push. You take one of those beginners out there and you go like, this is the way the sugar push give them run. They're going to feel amazing. Right. So you don't have to wait until they do something amazing out there. Just them getting to that stepping stone is incredible. Yes. And yeah. besides that, besides just little compliments, little wins here and there, um, you know, competitions aren't here like we talked about, but create a performance opportunity. Even if it's just your one student that you have and they don't have a routine, but you're just working on social dancing, get a videographer in there, get your fellow friend in there with their iPhone to do one of those cool videos where they move around you, go outside, create a Nicole and Tebow video. My God, they're so cool. So I'm sure cool. you guys are inspired by they're them so too. Cool. Um, but that's going to make your student again, be motivated to want to learn more, but then obviously have something really cool to show for all that hard work. Um, so creating a video is just a really easy way to motivate your students, mm -hmm. motivate your group class. Um, we have a super talented instructor at our dance studio. She teaches a solo tango class right now, and they just created a super awesome group of video together. Um, which was just a great experience for everybody, but it pushed them. They worked really hard on this combination for like eight weeks mm -hmm. to create this video. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even right now during COVID, you know, I know everybody's, you know, everybody's area is a little bit different. Uh, we have tried to increase, we've, we've decreased uh, almost all of the partner dance classes. We still have some, but we've increased so much more of like the solo dance classes. So for example, we used to have a partnered tango class, but now we have, a solo tango bar class, right? So they practiced this for the last couple of months and did this performance and had a videographer come out and create this amazing, you know, cool. video for the students who have been practicing. And again, we were able to maintain the distance. We had ballet bars, things like that. It was, it was amazing, an amazing experience. You know, one of the things that we've noticed is um, we've had to pivot so much during, during COVID. Um, but it's really helped us. It's helped us think outside the box. Uh, it's helped keep the community safe, but also helped later on, you know, obviously for some of the dance teachers out there that are hurting, like this is another way that can supplement things later. You know, there isn't more reason to do online content than now. Like even if, even if, you know, you feel like people are burnt out with the online right now and that, and that happens um, later on, it'll help to have that online content, right? So use this time teachers and community owners to do that, um, those videos that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, you know, sometimes we forget as adults that it's really exciting to have like a recital, to have a showcase. And it doesn't matter if you only have, you know, a couple of people in your community, you can still create a show, mm -hmm. you know, just, I don't know, get some little lamps. You can create some cool lighting. Um, and do it virtual, you know, have, have all of your students invite their friends and family and watch them perform even just a social dance, like a spotlight or a routine. If they have a routine, again, it gives people a reason to want to work hard. And I know everybody needs that right now. It's so easy for us to be, you know, just sitting on the couch doing nothing when we all need that reason to get up and move our bodies. So we actually created a showcase. Um, we've, we've had something called the gala previously, but now it is an actual showcase. And I'm telling you, our students are so excited about it and so thankful that they have a chance to, you know, to essentially get back on the dance floor again. Mm -hmm. um, and we have students who haven't really been doing much dancing. They're not really into the online stuff. So for them, this was like an opportunity they really needed and has completely brought them back into dancing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, that push that uh, that goal is really hard to achieve right now during COVID. So establishing that with these showcases really gets people to stay motivated and continue to have a reason to go out there a little bit more. Um, okay, we've actually gotten through most of what we were looking for. I guess the if there was a last thing, we were talking a little, we already touched on it. We talked about more dances. Um, West Coast Swing is such a mix of other dance. There's so much, there's so much Latin technique inside of West Coast Swing. Uh, there's so much moves that we have incorporated from Hustle. Salsa. Uh, yeah, from Salsa, Lindy Hop, you know, like, you know, wh whether it's from its roots or whether it's something that we have added, you know, it's actually created this, a stu this studio so that 
when people did those variations inside of their West Coast swing, it would be authentic, <laughs> right? So like when you do ochos, you look like you actually do Argentine tango and maybe not looks like a bastardized version of it, right? So a great way of doing that, whether you are the community leader or whether you know, you're looking for to have your people you know, invest more and become better dancers, definitely help them see those other dances, right? And that's why that trial with us is important at our studio because we let them try. If you're a studio that only does West Coast Swing and you only do that one day a week, you know, let your students know like, hey, you should definitely go out to that studio and do that hip hop class. You should go and do that waltz class. You should go and do, because I guarantee there's, there's skills that are gonna help you across the board. Um, you know the best way to inspire your students to go out and cross train is to do it yourself. That's right. You got to do it. So you'll see you'll see us in a lot of the classes. You know, Stacy is uh, uh, teaching a lot more uh, shuffle as well. So we're diving. I'm I'm jumping in there, looking like a fish out of water. Um, I'm to, uh, teaching the hip hop. Stacy doesn't look like a fish out. She's doing great. <laughs> I just look like a cheerleader sometimes. So you know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like definitely explore the other dances. It just helps them improve their West Coast swing and also get, you know, if you are a studio, um, it's a great way to help your people stay more involved. You know, um, sometimes they lose a passion for one dance, but they, they don't lose a passion for dance as a whole. They might get tired of one. It happens. It happens. Um, and we want to give people the availability of still having that enrichment in their lives of dance, uh, but maybe not always do the same dance. Um, anyway, so for everybody, we've pretty much gone through everything. We're doing great on time. We have maybe another 10 minutes. Um, does We can actually open this up to any more questions. Please, if you have any questions or if you loved what we talked about, let us know in the comment section. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about if you want to um, write down, if you didn't before about those like main topics, they'll help you with business, not just West Coast Swing. Um, this is we did marketing, which is how to get a new student registered. Enrollment is how, that, how to get that registered student in through the door. Onboarding, turning new students to forever dancers. And there was some extra ways to motivate that we added as well. As a community, um, just a, a community member, remember some of those you know, specific sections that we talked about? Um, I, I even think that we didn't, did we say anything about don't coaching people? That's just no, we didn't get we didn't get into those. <laughs> but every if you're if you're listening to this, like that should that should already should be a already given. That, you should already know that. But yeah, make sure to not not teach, you know, not uh not coach the people who you're dancing with. Smile if they mess up, no who worries. Cares? Who cares? Smile. We've created some amazing fun stuff because we didn't make it look like a mess up. You know, uh, whether you are a beginner dancer or more advanced dancer, it's all about how you mold, being a good critical thinker, adjusting to your partner and things like that. So um, you can help your community just by complimenting. Or if that's not you, just don't be that person who is having a negative experience. Smile at the end. You know, if you are right now, it's COVID. So, you know, that may not be an option with somebody you're practicing with. Um, you know, <laughs> we need to have like, you know, um, what is it called again like a uh, expressive body language you know because that's that's happening right how do how do we look excited that they did something good without necessarily you know showing that in our face i guess eyebrows yeah. <laughs> no i guess that'll oh, look like scared so <laughs> no i think maybe maybe with maybe with a mask that might look like oh no <laughs> oh, you're right you're right <laughs> you get the idea. yeah Oh, I love that. Um, something that we forgot to mention along the way, um, this is more for my community leaders, but even if you're a dancer and, you know, it's a great idea to suggest. Um, we always do a mixer at our social dances, yeah. which again was that trial and error. We went back and forth and back and forth between doing it, not doing it. Oh, some people hate it. Some people love it. What do we do? Mm -hmm. um, but we do it. Um, and our instructors or our higher level, level dancers seek out those beginners because obviously they need a little encouragement to mm -hmm. get on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, so we do our very best to get them out there. Um, but something we found is that you can make fun games out of the rotation. And whether that be like, you know, saying a, a funny word for the rotation instead of rotate. Or maybe something like uh, every time we say rotate, you're going to tell your next partner your favorite color or the month you were born in or what was your first car? What do you do for a living? What did you want to be as a child when you were growing up? You know, maybe that was a little long. 
right? Mm -hmm. We're looking for short answers, but you get the idea. We're encouraging them to be there for more than just dance because that's what everybody needs right now. They need the connection. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad you like that idea. Yeah, it's quite it's quite fun. Uh, we've gotten some good laughs out of people. We're just about done. Um, it was amazing. You can take this time since we have, you know, another four minutes. Um, we'll hang around in case anybody has any more questions. Please put them in the comments. Or again, um, we like for you, I, we like for you to tell us if there's anything that impacted you today. Is there anything that you heard that maybe you didn't hear before? Um, uh, a new way, whether it's a section of marketing or onboarding or better, or, you know, everything that we talked about, is there anything that stuck out to you today that we talked about that made an impact on you, whether it was as a community leader or as a community member? Let me know in the comment in the chat section. Let me know if you love it. How much we try to connect with our new people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. No, no means not yet. Not just straight. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Repeat the reach outs. Good. Don't give up. Yes. <laughs> I want to come to your studio to get a dance bike. Yes. <laughs> if you want to come to Florida right now, it's a little crazy. Advertising on Meetup. Yep. Uh, follow follow ups are more. Yeah. Yeah. Follow ups are so important in business. God, it took me so long to be like, I don't want to bug them, you know, but that's why you come up with a system that doesn't feel like that. But um, by the way, whenever we do those follow-ups, I do both. It, when we got it from DSOA, like this, those sections, they had like a text or a email or something like that. And when I do it, I just do them both at the same time. I send the text and the email at the same time because everybody's just different. I know people who literally never message me back on text. They only do email. And I know the opposite. They're, they only message, their, their life is busy. They only message through text. So that's why you got to reach out on those different platforms. Mm -hmm. um, reaching out to you newcomers, using Facebook to promote your business. That's right. Listen, Facebook ads, Facebook ads is what prevents you from being the person who's at Publix handing out flyers. Okay, so if you, you can either take the time to walk around and hand out, you know, some of those flyers of those public places or Facebook ads actually help. It can, helps you not do that. And it actually helps you the money that you'd spend, whether it's your own personal time as the, as the business or, or a community builder, Facebook ads help a lot. Now, please, if you have the time, do, do both, you know, especially um, if you are, we've done things where we do performances at, lo at public locations and hand out flyers. That's totally fine, but just the impact that Facebook ads have for the for, per dollar is amazing. You just have to have a little bit of understanding of what you need to do in the back end on the ads, so you can target your whether it's the exact person or whether you create lookalike audiences. We can literally make a six-hour intensive on Facebook ads. <laughs> it's huge. There's there's so much specifics in it. Um, not only do we, does Stacy before. Before we had the money to have it automated, Stacy basically read every book she could, did every online, you know, did DSOA, did all these things to find out. At this point, we even have, we have a company who's helping us with it as well. Um, but we did, we definitely did do that at the beginning. I'm glad you guys should learn so much. It was wonderful to spend a little time with you guys on Valentine's Day. Again, it was great to see you guys. If you have any questions about any of this, I know it takes some time for it to stew. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys again yeah. soon. Thanks, Keep Tammy. Dancing. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, yes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, we can't wait to be back together again.